The conflict between Russia and Ukraine is heading to its one-year anniversary mark and plans in South Africa for joint military drills involving the country, China and Russia will go ahead. And last week we saw visits from several countries from Europe uh, to the United States all petitioning South Africa to not necessarily take a stand as the European Union made it known last week but to rather err on the side of international law. The former South African Intelligence Minister Ronnie Castrols has written a rather interesting thought piece on uh, these latest developments around the war uh, in Russia, uh, in Ukraine rather, and between Russia and Ukraine. He joins us now for more on his piece. Thank you very much, Mr. Castrols, for availing yourself this afternoon. Perhaps let's start with uh, the brief history lesson that is quite personal that you detail in your thought piece um, in terms of going to exile and your time in training. Uh, let's start with a little bit of that. Just to give us uh, a bit of context because you argue that it is not just about the Soviet era ties. Yes, indeed. I think it really is important um, to make that point because several commentators, academics as well, have been castigating the ANC uh, for, for supporting as they see it, the Russian position on the basis that Russia provided us with the then Soviet Union, I'm sorry to correct myself, provided us with essential support and training, military as well as civilian, etc., over 30 years. Um, and we trained there in the Soviet Union. Those of us who did the military training received the weapons and all that support. We got to know Russian people and understand they are very fine people. They're not the ghouls that the West make out. Um, but the point that was being made was that because we had that support, irrespective of what Russia now does, which is, of course, no longer the Soviet Union, um, we support them because of that support. And, you know, the Minister of uh, International Relations, Naledi Pando, has made it very clear, as I will too, that, of course, we really indebted to the support that we received. It was very essential, whilst the very same NATO and Western powers um, <laughs> were supporting the apartheid regime and, of course, supporting... Uh, Zelensky, Kiev's regime. Um, and we look at this in terms of, yes, we had that incredible legacy. Our people need to know and understand what Soviet people did uh, to support us. But the position that's taken up today has been brilliantly articulated by um, Minister Pandor, uh, after her meeting with the uh, foreign minister of Russia, uh, Mr. Zelensky. And that's all about having the right to decide who we can meet and train uh, with in terms of the naval exercises that will be taking place. A reminder that we've had such exercises with the US AFRICOM in, in the very recent past with the French, with the British and so on. We are sovereign independent state and we can decide on that basis. Further in relation to that um, is, is the fact that we have a non-aligned position. And we had that throughout the period of the ANC pre-coming pre, pre to uh, liberation and, and post. But the key point about the past is, as I've said, we and the South African people, we owe a great deal to the solidarity and support we receive from African states, we received from socialist countries, from China and Cuba, the former East Germany, and particularly the Soviet Union. The heart of that, of course, was the Moscow and the, uh, the Russian people who lost millions of people saving the world in the Second World War in the struggle against fascism, against Hitler as Germany. In fact, you argue in your piece that South Africa is an important proponent of the non-alignment movement, so which would suggest that it's not a simple yes or no. Do you support the war? Yes or no. South Africa take a stance? Yes or no. Because you also point out that Germans, Angela Merkel and the former French president, Francois Hollande, pretended to support the 2014 Minsk Accords. 
Well, I'm glad you're making that point. You see, I, I know for a lot of people in our country and those who don't know the history and keeping, keep up to date with, with the international affairs and situation, uh, and we're dealing with a huge propaganda machine dominating the airwaves and the print media and so on, which makes out that Putin is crazy, he's like Hitler, the Russians are bad people and so on. Um, what we need to bear in mind in terms of why Russia has gone into the Ukraine and why this war is taking place is that in 1991, as we might recall, the Soviet Union was no longer there. That basically meant that two military pacts, the NATO one, the West, and the Warsaw Pact of the socialist countries were no longer required, and the Warsaw Pact disintegrated. The Western states and their leaders promised Gorbachev at that time, we will not encroach any further on the borders of, the, of Russia now that it's, it's, it's Russia. And we then move forward to the Minsk Accords pre the year ago's and I do call it an invasion. It's called by the Russians a special military um, exercise or operation, rather. That, in fact, um, Putin's Russia was relying on and wanted the Minsk Accords to be implemented in 2014, when a coup took place, supported by the Americans, which brought the present regime and the predecessors of Zelensky to power, which went on a very, a, a very um, crazy approach with regard to Russia, banning Russian language and education in the schools. So many people in the Ukraine, especially in the East, but not only there, are Russian. And what the Russians said at the Minsk Accord, supported particularly by France and Germany, was, OK, what's required to settle this conflict is there should no longer be an onslaught by Kiev and a military one in which 13,000 people to 15,000 people died up until 2022, uh, bombarding those areas because people were claiming their rights as Russian speakers, and that Ukraine should adopt a neutral, non-nuclear position and should denazify, because in the western part of Ukraine, there was huge collaboration with the Nazis during the Second World War, and many of these people and their groupings, such as the Azov Battalion and others supporting the the wartime collaborator Stepan Bandero, who's lionized heroes in, of Zelensky and Kiev. And that was an agreement that, yes, we push forward to the, the, these accords. And on that basis, um, Putin's Russia felt, OK, we can have a deal, a, a proper, peaceful, negotiated outcome. What... Merkel and the former French president you've mentioned, Hollande, have now revealed is that actually we were just, we, we, we were deceitful. We were, we did not mean it. We just wanted to Russia to believe that with us as partners, we could create a peaceful basis there. But we pretended that because we wanted to build up Ukraine militarily so it could conquer the eastern part of the Ukraine again, that Russian-speaking area where two breakaway republics were formed, and, of course, uh, you know, deal with, with Putin. I mean, it's that kind of hypocrisy that I point out. And, it's, by the way, it's not only me. <laughs> There's so much to learn from United States, former intelligence officers, academics like John Mearsheimer, similar people from Germany and, and, and um, other Western countries, uh, Switzerland, etc. These experts who actually have re revealed all of this. And Mr. Castro, if you'd allow me, I'm please, so um, to join you, I do Sorry. beg your pardon, just for the purpose of time. What opportunity yeah. then does this present for this a continent that was once termed the dark continent, and now it's been crystallized as this shining light, and 
you hear a lot about king making these days especially with south african politics and uh, all these coalitions so uh, what opportunity does this present right you've got the european union that was here last week saying well we're not asking you to take a side we're merely saying just err on the side of international law you've got the united states petitioning the continent you've got china you've got russia be it whomever especially when it comes to the best interest in the long term of the people of this continent well I think many of the countries of this continent have actually shown in this past year that they were not going to be bullied by the US or by the EU into supporting the sanctions program of the, of the United States, which actually has forced West European countries such as Germany and others to toe the line in that regard. Um, what we have been saying is, no, sorry, we see the best way out is to deal with both sides and to talk about diplo diplomatic means and negotiations for peace. Um, that's what our, our president and our, our international minister keeps repeating, and others do throughout the world and in Africa. So this shows that Africa does have a strong voice in relation to independence, and these former colonized countries of Africa, Asia, Latin America are refusing to be pushed in and bullied into adopting a U.S. position, which unfortunately Germany and Western Europe have shown a proclivity to go against their best interests and to join in with this absolute militarist position driven by the USA, which is bringing the world to the brink of Third World War. And thank goodness we have independent states in the global south, including in Africa, that can raise their voices to stave off that madness. Bonnie Castro is the former intelligence minister of South Africa. Thank you very much, sir, for your time.